What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, people? Again, as one Crookshank checking in, your one and only Move Swiftly speaker checking in for yet another Move Swiftly thought. Today, I want to take you guys back. Take you guys back to 2005. You know, right now we are in a time where football season is approaching the air is getting a little lighter and it's my time I always get that itch I always get wrapped up in all these football memories and me being the teamwork guy me being the guy that could be one and only move swiftly speaker the one and only person that you can get a certain perspective of teamwork on the one and only person you can come to if you want a perspective on teamwork got to take you back to 2005 because 2005 was a very very special year for myself, not only myself, but for the high school I played for, which is Good Council High School, and the youth football organization I played for, the White Oak Warriors. The best youth football organization, period. You can debate me, we, we, we can go at it. I say it all the time. I, was, I, don't care who I'm, I don't care who I'm saying that in front of. The White Oak Warriors are the best youth football organization ever assembled, period, point blank. Not, not dropping that, you're not debating me with that one. All right. So the year was 2005 and man, you know, at Good Council, so there was a, a solid connection between Good Council football and the White Oak Warriors. There was a, a strong, strong pipeline, a strong pipeline between the Good Council Falcons and the White Oak Warriors. All right. So one of the one of the main players, one of the first players that ever made that transition from the White Oak Warriors to the Good Council Falcons was a running back. His name was Jerron Pearson. Remember that name, Jerron Pearson, because he was one. Listen, he was one bad motherfucker. In fact, the year so the year was 2005, and I played JV that year. Jerron was actually a senior, like the star running back that senior year. And I remember our JV coach that year. He used to coach for the Saints, the Silver Spring Saints, which was one of the which was one of the rivals for the White Oak Warriors back then. And I remember talking to him about a certain game, and he was just like, look, that one game, we could not stop Jerron Pearson. In fact, that so that team, that team actually had Jerron Pearson as the running back and Joe Leffigid, who ended up playing at Rutgers and play, played for the Indianapolis Colts. He, he, we tried to get him in good counsel his senior year, but so so picture that. Joe Leffigid and Jerron Pearson in the same backfield. Done, done deal. I know that might not seem like a big deal to some of you younger football players, but if you know, if you've been around football in the Maryland area for years, you know, for a couple of years, you know the name Joe Leffigid and Jerron Pearson. Just picture them two in the same backfield. So every year, I mean, every year now, Jerron was two years older than me. So I remember, you know, being a young, young White Oak Warrior. This was actually before we were the White, we were the Brick Shaney White Oak Warriors when we used to wear, um, we used to have the Michigan colored uniforms, like the basically had the Michigan helmets and all that stuff. We were blue and gold and stuff. Every like after every game, I would go find a quiet corner in the on the field and just watch Jerron Pearson do his thing. Every single Saturday, he would do it for me. Every single Saturday, he would pop like a uh, maybe a, at least a thirty plus. Now I'd say close to forty yards. He'd just pop a long run every single week. He'd give me some of that. So the year's two thousand five. And this was the first year ever that Good Counsel beat the Matha. Ever. All right. They were, we're approaching the 20 year anniversary. And every time I go speak and I tell people I went to Good Counsel, you know, the name, the, the question always comes up. Oh, yeah, that team that plays the Matha and all that. So this was the first year, 2005, in which we beat them. We, we lost in the CSC Championship, but we beat them. My, my team, my JV year, we beat them. We, we beat them on JV. And then we beat them on the varsity level in the regular season. We didn't win in the playoffs. All right. But this, that, that, that game in which we did win was a like a huge huge deal a big big deal because you know it that was the year that coach galt so the galts uh, i believe he's currently the strength coach for penn state but at the time coach the white galt was the strength coach for the university of maryland and his two sons the Deej and Tommy. Tommy and Deej got played for us. And there was just, there, there was a lot of, okay, good counsel's coming to ball this year. In fact, I remember that summer we went to the University of Maryland football camp. <laughs> and, you know, there was some DeMatha guys there. And there was, there was just kind of that look of like, okay, this, this is our year. We're going to fuck y'all up this year. <laughs> now, we weren't saying that verbally, but we were mentally saying it because, and then we had Coach Galt kind of riding for us. And then you had the Maryland coaches who were kind of team DeMatha and expect and the math of the win it was just a little bit everything was a lot of anticipation for that game all right so 
we won, like I mentioned, we won that regular season game. And the first touchdown of that game was Jerron Pearson. Jerron Pearson, I, I don't, I believe it was like 87 belly. He cut that bitch. He listen, he gave him the, the ball off tackle to the left. He cuts it, he cuts it all the way to the left, and then it's just wide open. This was, and you're talking to someone that has watched Jerron for years upon years. That was the fastest 30 yard run that I have fucking seen. Listen, he cut it to the left. He was bow, gone, gone, baby, gone. 35 yards, pure speed. I mean, everybody, like the whole crowd went crazy. It was at that point where every, if you were a White Oak Warrior dad, if you're a White Oak, anybody involved with the White Oak Warriors, you could feel it. All the dads were proud. I mean, the especially after we won that game, <laughs> especially after we won that game, you could feel, because my dad, my father was a White Oak Warrior dad. The phone calls were just going on. Hey, Coach Malloy is on to something, baby. Jerron did it. We did because we tapped that ass. We beat the math for the first time ever, all right? It was a great, great game, all right? So a couple weeks later, a couple weeks later, as we were getting ready for the playoffs, I remember I remember Coach Malloy coming and talking to the JV team, which was my, I was actually, we actually went undefeated that year, and I was actually a captain on that JV team. And I remember Coach Malloy coming and speaking to us, and he would just kind of congratulate us on a great season and stuff like that. And he asked us a question. He asked us a question. He goes, okay, so that game that we beat the math of, the when we finally beat him, we finally got over that hump, he asked us, what was the biggest play of the game? What was the biggest play of the game? And all of us, I mean, speaking for myself, I expected him to say that play that Jerron, you know, he broke it and just broke the game wide open with that that amazing, amazing run. And he goes, no, 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 that wasn't it. Wasn't it. Wasn't it. If you go back and watch the game, right, there was a fake punt that was called. And the, the person, so the, we were, let me just give you some back. So we were up, we were up by like 10 points, I believe. It was late in the fourth quarter and we had to seal the game. We didn't want to give the math of the ball back and stuff like that because, you know, it's, it's, it is the math. We don't want to, you know, they, they got some dogs. <laughs> they got dogs every single year, but we didn't want to give the math of the ball back. So we're going down and we're getting ready to punt. We have to punt. We're in fourth down. We didn't get the first down, yada, yada, yada. And Coach Malloy calls a fake punt and it worked. We actually got the math on a fake punt. So the person who who calls the fake punt, I, I, his name is, is escaping me right now. He was like a skinny Asian kid. His name, I believe his name was Steven Clackerty or something like that. Just like he wasn't Jerron, obviously. He was a no-name guy. But he he worked his ass off and he got his he got onto special teams. He got a starting spot on the punt team. So <laughs> they call a fake punt. Steven gets the ball and Steven runs for the first down and that pretty much sealed the game. That pretty much sealed the game. And it was funny because Coach Malloy had emphasized that he goes, you know, that was the biggest play of the game. Now, if you were to ask me who was going to make the play to win the game, I probably would have said Jerron or, or Reggie or Drew or, you know, one of the, the players that are going to be going on playing in college. But it wasn't him. Steven Clackety, guy, humble guy, just shows up every day, does his work, does his job, and, you know, just works his butt off. And that ended up being the play of the game. And you see what I'm saying? So it was a fake punt. And, and those are the things. Those are the things. Now, if you're, if you're listening to this, again, we're starting a football season. Football season coming around. And, and I've coached high school. I've been around a, a lot of high school football coaches. It's my life. It is my life. This is why I'm the teamwork guy, all right? From seven years old all the way to 22 and even after 22. This is my life. This game, the lessons from the, this game are my life. And the point I'm making to you is when you show up every single day, like Stephen Clackney, in many ways, it wasn't Jerron. It wasn't Jerron that Jerron didn't. Yeah, he may have cracked that 35 yard run, but there was somebody blocking. There was a setup. There were wide receivers blocking downfield to make sure none of the corners can stop them and, and stuff like that. So many things have to come together for Jerron to break that 35 yard run. And then for us to actually win the game, win the game, it took every single facet of the game. It took getting on the punt team, the special teams play, and saying, all right, Steve Clackety, you know what you're doing, I trust you, fake punt, let's go, and let's win the game. Now, here's how it, again, it translates into your life in terms of whatever it is you do. And I don't know if you're listening to this, I don't know what exactly you do, but I do know you're part of a team. I do know you're part of a system, and you have to work your system, and you gotta be ready at any moment 
for your time to be called. Any moment they can call that fake punt. Any moment, you if you're not working, if you're not staying ready, then you got a problem. So that's what Stephen Clark did. He stayed ready, stayed ready, stayed ready for his opportunity. And now for the rest of his life, he's gonna remember, hey, the big, the biggest, probably the, I mean, listen, what, if I could really describe that atmosphere to you, it's the Matha Good Council. You had the Maryland, I mean, the place was filled. This was before seven on seven. This was before we, you know, had a chance to, to know the play like nowadays you got guys transferring in and out because they want to be with their friends and all this other bullshit it, it's a whole lot different now when it comes to the the high school football who plays for who it, it's a lot of politics a lot of bullshit that goes on i don't even have time to get into it because it, that's not the point of it the point of this is to understand that that atmosphere was long it was long overdue all right the math is in fact i'll even i'll close you out with it just to give you guys an understanding it, that game was a Friday night. The next day, I, my father and I drove out to Baltimore to watch the White Oak Warriors play the Northwood Rams. And that was a big rivalry. This was actually 2005. So this was the first year that the White Oak Warriors actually won the big Super Bowl and played on ESPN and all that whole, that whole thing. We, we actually did it. We finally did it. We, we won the whole thing. And I remember going into that game when I got to Baltimore that Saturday morning. Reggie was there and, you know, a lot of the plot, some of the Reggie, Duran didn't make it, but I remember Reggie helped coach the White Oak, who used to come back and help coach the White Oak Warriors and all that stuff. And I remember Coach Bryant telling the team, he goes, look, the math has been a dynasty for years and good counsel finally took him out. So now it's our time as the White Oak Warriors to take out Northwood and become the best. This is why I call us the best youth football organization, period. All right. So again, the point, the point of me telling you all this is it many times it's many times and it translates to into life very much it's not the person the skilled person it's not Jerron the Jerons of the world they do a great job but in many times it's not the Jerons of the world that are the ones making the big difference in fact it's the Stephen Clackerty's you know be ready for that fake punt to be called it could happen today if you're not ready then you're not going to get you're not going to get the win all right you're not going to get the win every single person is needed that's the one thing that, and I applaud, this is why Coach Malloy has, has been one of the best in our business for years, is because he did, think about what he did. He came from, wherever he came from, he came and spoke to the JV team. That was me, my, my JV team. And he made sure we had an understanding of that was the most important play, not the play that, you know, your, your daddies, your mommies, that the fans are watching, that any normal fan would, would pick up they would think that it was Jerron making that run but in fact it was the fake punt that got us the first down and sealed the win all right again I have more I, I've already seen I've gone I, I <laughs> it's funny because the plan was to keep these under 10 minutes but when I start talking when I start talking on topics like this I can go for at least two hours on story after story after story after story but the point is stay ready you never know when it's gonna be your time your time to be called for that fake punt to go ahead and seal the win all right Again, signing off, my name as one Crookshank, your one and only move swiftly speaker. Everyone can, oh, well, geez, oh, before I do that, if you want to dive deeper into my world, go subscribe to the Move Swiftly podcast. Go get a copy of my book, Swiftly, Make Your Move. And at some point, it's, it's, if you do want a copy of The Six Figure Athlete, just, you know, message me and we'll, I'll figure out a way to get a copy to you. All right. So again, everyone, continue to move swiftly. We will talk more soon.